We're in New Jersey right now, where the wife of the man who was killed in the nasty neighbor stabbing trial is on the witness stand for the second day in a row. Her name is Tiffany Durham. She witnessed that altercation. And as a matter of fact, um, an argument between her and the defendant is what kind of led up to it. An argument uh, that kind of culminated for the two of them when she says he hit her, smacked her in the face. And then the big brawl ensued where the defendant had a knife. Let's go into the courtroom now. Uh, she, she's dealing with uh, some very emotional stuff, having to recount for this jury what happened after her husband was stabbed. Let's watch. Eventually did an, an ambulance arrive at your residence? Yes. Where was that ambulance located when it arrived? The end of the driveway. What happened after the ambulance got there? They came with the stretcher. What happened after they got up to the driveway with the stretcher? Uh, they removed Timmy from the vehicle. And where did where was Timmy placed? Into the back of the ambulance. What happened after Tim was placed in the back of the ambulance? I went in the ambulance and gave him a report. When you say gave them a report, what do you mean? I gave the EMTs a report of what happened, um, the findings that I had, and the, you know, the stab went into the arm and um, under the armpit, and, uh, and then they asked me to leave. Uh, what was your understanding as to where uh, Timmy was going to be taken? I was told he was being flown to Cooper. And after you were told that he was being flown to Cooper. Thank you. Um, after you were told he was being flown to Cooper, what was the next thing you were going to do? <clears throat> I was trying to get the boys together. Where were your boys at? They were being held for questioning by the police. At some point, did you uh, see Gage or Billy there still at your house? They were still there, yes, with the police. Uh, what was your intention of doing uh, with, with your boys at that point? To bring them to be with their dad. Where were you going to take them? They both had injuries. I wanted them to get checked, but they didn't need an ambulance. They weren't um, life-threatening injuries, so they were going to go and get their get checked, and I was going to go to Cooper. Uh, was anybody going to go with you to Cooper? Yes. Who was going to go with you? My girlfriend was taking me to Cooper. Uh, who was your girlfriend? Um, Karen Galena. Was she there uh, at your house at that time? She arrived, yes, later. I mean, she arrived to take me. Um, when in proximity to when your husband was taken away in the ambulance to when your girlfriend got there, about, can you estimate how much time that was at all? I don't know time. I don't know time. Well, I don't that's, that's perfectly know. Fair. As far as uh, what happened after that, after your girlfriend got to your house and was going to take you to Cooper, what did you do? We went on our way to Cooper. Which way did you go to get to Cooper? Uh, we got on 55, I, I want to say from Sherman Avenue. Mm -hmm. And how far did you, did you actually make it to Cooper? Uh, we got to Mullica Hill, um, to the that and Spear exit there. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's Mullica Hill. I'm, oh, the, to, the one that's on uh, 322? Yes. The, uh, why did you make it up only to that point? I received a text message saying that he was um, going to Inspira Vineland. After, uh, so at that point, you, you had gotten your phone back? From Karen's phone. Okay, so that was on Karen's phone, not your phone. Right. Uh, to your knowledge, where was your phone at at that particular time? I think Gage had it. So at some point, Gage... I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, some my Gage had my phone. 
Gage had my phone then at that point because I got my phone back at the police department. So you get off, you get this text message, you get off of uh, Route 55. Oh, what do you then do after that? We went back to Vineland and Spira. Uh, and you did you take 55 to get back to in Spira? Yeah. Yes. In, in Vineland, right? Yes. Uh, what happened when you got to the hospital there in Vineland? That's when we were advised, but he didn't make it. And by he, who do you mean? My husband. <laughs> do you not have anything further at this time? <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Witness a moment, Judge. Just let me know when you're ready, okay? I'm fine, I'm sorry. It's okay, not a problem. All right, counsel, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Ma'am, I'm going to start by reminding you that you're under oath, okay? Yes. <clears throat> and you understand that you've sworn to tell the truth in this courtroom today? Yes. And you swore to tell the truth yesterday? Yes. And you understand that it's a crime to violate that oath, right? Yes. You also understand that it's a crime to lie to the police, right? Yes. Prior to your testimony today, you met with the prosecutors, right? Yes. Approximately how many times? Two, three. When was the most recent time you met with the prosecutors? Like this morning? Did you speak with the prosecutors about this case this morning? I'm, I guess, yes. Before that, when was the most recent time that you spoke to them about the case? Last week. Do you know what day last week? No. Was it before or after Gage had testified? It was... before. You're aware that your son, William, met with the prosecutors last week? earlier this week as well? Yes. You've already testified that you had criminal charges regarding this case? Yes. You had attorneys to represent you regarding those criminal charges? Yes. You met with those attorneys? Yes. Several occasions? Yes. They reviewed your charges with you? Yes. They reviewed the evidence in the case with you? Yes. You viewed the discovery that the state showed you over the last day or so. You've viewed that before? Yes. You've seen the videos before? Yes. When was the last time that you met with your attorneys for your criminal charges? Um, I spoke with them. Two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. <clears throat> Yesterday, the prosecutor showed you paperwork that showed that your charges were dismissed, right? Correct. And that paperwork showed you that those charges were dismissed in July of 2021. Correct. You met with your criminal defense attorneys two weeks ago. Correct. And they did not tell you that you no longer have pending charges? Correct.
What were you meeting with them about? Objection, Judge. No charges pending. No charges pending. What's the objection? It's privilege information in consultation with attorneys, regardless of whether or not sidebar. Charges. Well, it's about time we heard an objection here from the state on that cross. I'm sitting here wanting to scream because, uh, number one, this isn't relevant to the issue at hand um, because there was a history with this. When police came and initially sorted out, they charged uh, the members of the Durham family, but those were dropped. They're no longer pending. This should not be introduced. There should have been an objection the first time it came up. Or better yet, the state should have had a motion in limine filed to make sure the defense wasn't going to go down this road. And if you're wondering, are you allowed to talk with the prosecution? Yes. You're their witness. You can't talk about, you know, your testimony while you're you're on the stand sworn like she is going from one day to the next. But prior to trial, yes, you're going to have meetings with the state. Absolutely. You're going to be prepared to testify. There's nothing wrong about that. Um, but the, the light she's kind of casting it in with this cross, I, if I was on the other side, uh, for the state. I would have protected her. I would have objected. But that is just me. Here's what we want to do, folks. We're going to squeeze in a break. We're at the bottom of the hour. Tweet us. Let us know what you think. Uh, this is so sad watching this woman try to keep it together on the witness stand. At Court TV is our network handle. We'll go back to New Jersey after this. Divorced, death and DNA. How an investigation into a murder revealed a surprising suspect. This case comes down to the evidence. Someone they knew with Tamron Hall. All new episode tonight, 7, 6 Central on Court TV. A quiet community rocked by tragedy. Gannon Stout disappeared from his home. Gannon's stepmother was charged with his murder. She will pay for this heinous thing she does. The stepmother murder trial. Live coverage continues Friday morning on CourtTV.com. Thanks for staying with us. Let's go back to New Jersey together for more of the cross-examination of the wife of the man who was killed in the nasty neighbor stabbing case. So as we previously discussed, you met with your criminal defense attorneys two weeks ago. I spoke with them, yes. And they didn't tell you that the charges that were dismissed in excess of a year and a half ago had been dismissed against you? No, they did not. And clearly, that was very important to you, right? Yes. I mean, yesterday you were telling us how you, you lost your job over criminal charges against you. And I asked them the status of my case. And they did not inform you that over a year and a half ago your charges were dismissed? No, they did not. And have you been to court for those charges in the last year and a half? No. You're aware that if you have criminal charges pending against you, you have a Fifth Amendment right to remain silent, right? Is that correct? You're aware of your right to remain silent? Yes. And you're aware that that right doesn't exist if you're not accused of a crime, right? I don't understand. So if, if there's criminal charges pending against you, you have a right to remain silent regarding the actions that are alleged to have led to those charges, right? Yes. And if those charges are, let's say, dismissed and you're not alleged to have committed a crime, that right no longer exists. Objection, Judge. Sustained. Are you aware that if you had pending charges today, you could remain silent when asked questions about your actions that led to those charges? No. Let's talk a little bit about May 4th, 2020. You already told us that on that day you, you worked. Right? Yes. You told us that you would have arrived home around 5.30. Yes. William Durham Sr. was at the residence. Yes. William Durham Jr. was at the residence. Yes. Gage Durham was at the residence. Yes. At some point, 
William Durham Sr. started making hot dogs and hamburgers on the grill for dinner, right? Yes. You were cutting William Durham Jr.'s hair in the garage? Yes. What was William Durham Sr. drinking that day? Molson Ice. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Molson okay. Ice. Uh, about how many drinks did he have? I have no idea. What were you drinking? Uh, probably nothing. At some point throughout this, you learned that Gage claimed that Zach had swerved a car at him. Correct. That upset you? Yes. Made you a little bit angry? Yes. Upset your husband? Yes. Made him angry? Worried. Okay. Was he drinking before you arrived to him that day? I'm sure. So, you learn that Gage had this encounter. You don't call the police, you're hanging out in the garage, right? Yes. Boys are eating their dinner at the counter inside the house. Yes. You see Zach driving down the street. At that time, I was in the kitchen. So you could see from the kitchen, Zach's driving down the street. Correct. You alert your husband. Correct. He immediately hops into his big black truck, right? Yes. Backs that truck out into the road. Pulled forward. Pulled, I'm sorry, pulled forward into Correct. the road. Locks the road, prevents Zach from going home. Correct. And the confrontation begins. Correct. You take out your phone and start video recording. Right. You march down your driveway yelling at Zach. Incorrect. What part of that was incorrect? Sarah had the first words. Did you march down your driveway while yelling at Zach? I marched down the driveway with no words. Sarah started words first. Would you like to view the video of you speaking? Love to. Take a minute to pull up, so I'm just gonna talk to you while I wait. All right, so at some point, the purpose of him pulling out and blocking Zach's way was so that you could confront Zach, right? Correct. And you wanted to confront Zach and what was what was the purpose of, of stopping the car and marching To ask forward? him why he swerved at my son that day. And your voice is raised, right? Right, talking over the vehicles, yes. And you're walking up the drive, down your driveway closer and closer to his car. You have to answer audibly so the record can pick it up. Yes. And you're asked why you're blocking them. Right? Yes. It's clear that they want to continue on their path home. Right? 
Correct. You are preventing that from happening. You and your husband are preventing that from happening, right? I don't believe so. Your husband's car was pulled into the street, blocking Mr. Latham's car, correct? You already testified to that under oath. Correct, and he clearly got away. Uh, that wasn't the question. The question was, you were stopping him from going home, and they were telling you that they wished to go home, right? And he clearly was able to go around. Again, ma'am, the question was, were you blocking his path with the intention to stop him from going to his home? Were you and your husband doing that? I wasn't, no. I you, was standing on the road. My you husband, were okay yes. with your husband doing that? That, yes. That was the purpose of you telling your Correct. husband that Zach was coming down the way? Correct. Oh, I think defense counsel needs to pull back big time with this witness. You run the risk of looking like a bully to the jury when you have a widow on the witness stand. And the key for this case is the law. It's not the facts that are going to win this case for the defense. It's probably the law that's going to allow them to win this one. Stand by, folks. We're going to see more from Timmy Durham's widow right after this. It's a mystery that's captivated the nation. This stretch is just so beyond what anyone could imagine. And left a trail of dead bodies. Lori Vallow Daybell, accused of triple murder, including her two youngest children. You'll hear every dramatic moment with real-time expert analysis. It's just so hard to know where the truth is. The Doomsday Cult Mom Murder Trial. Coverage begins this week after jury selection, only on Court TV. Back to court together now in the nasty neighbor stabbing trial. The widow is on the witness stand being cross-examined pretty hard. Let's watch. Your sons came out and were also in the driveway. Yes. And at some point they began, Gage began to say things to Zach, right? Yes. And as you approached the car closer and closer, you were told to back up and to get out of Zach's face. Yes. And you told him no. Correct. And you were asked again to get out of his face, and you told him no again. Correct. And you continued to get closer with the camera and to taunt him. Correct. And at one point, you said, Oh, did you just hit me? Correct. And as you said that, you glanced over to the side towards your husband. Right? Yes. Your husband was in his truck, right? Yes. So he had a partially obstructed view of what was actually happening. No, uh, he could see everything. He could see everything. So okay. he had a big black truck. Yeah, it was a big black truck. Um, so he could see everything that was happening. He could see whether Zach had actually hit you. Yes. And your boys were, at this point, especially Gage, coming up behind you, right? I have no idea, because I couldn't I see behind me. I watched the video. Did you see Gage coming behind you? I can show you a picture of it. OK. All right, well, there's a little pause while she's getting the picture uh, to the witness. What do you think of this? I'm loving your tweets. Thank you for, for all of these great tweets uh, and your uh, comments and assessment of what's going on here. Let me ask my guest what she thinks. Trial attorney Kelly Hyman standing by in Colorado. Uh, Kelly, what do you think of what's going on here? Hey, Julie, it's good to see you. Um, I agree with you 100%. I think you cross a very fine line. Here is this woman. She is very emotional. And you want to have a balance between being too aggressive, um, asking questions and appear as being a bully, but also making sure that you get the evidence and the testimony is, is, as well. And so it's a very, very fine line to do that. But I think the, the defense um, attorney needs to be very careful of coming across as being a strong bully to the, to the witness. And uh, the jury will uh, not like that. 
Exactly, Kelly. Uh, thank you for that. You know, and, and when you're an attorney, you know which witnesses are going to help your case right here. You can't get blood out of a stone. I, I mean, she's not going to help the defense. So it's kind of, if, if it were me, I would use the opportunity to be really sympathetic toward her. I would say, I'm sorry for your loss, you know, because to me, it's not about the facts. It's about the law, you know, and I would argue the law all day long in this one. Uh, what do you think, Kelly? No, I absolutely agree. It was interesting when she first came up defense counsel. Like, so obviously she was very emotional. You could see you would give her time, let her wait. So then it shows you as a caring human being, this husband, no matter what, lost her husband. You want to show some empathy, some sympathy towards this woman. And then, and the jury, you know, can watch. They're very, very observant and very smart. They're seeing this stuff. And if the jury doesn't like you, then, you know, that's not going to void well for your client. So well put, Kelly Hyman. Thank you for that. So, yeah, you're right. You pause. You could even offer her a Kleenex if you want, something to show some sympathy. Let's take a listen now. Um, do you recognize yourself in that image? Yes. Do you recognize the other person in that image? Yes. Who's the other person? Gage. And that would be footage from May 4th of 2020, right? Yes. And that's you approaching Zach's car, Zach's truck. Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to ask the D12 be admitted into evidence. Objections. In evidence, D12. So now I'm going, uh, permission to publish, Judge? Okay. Now I'm going to ask you again. <coughs> Did Gage follow you up towards Zach's car? Yes. You were repeatedly warned to back off, right? Yes. You said no. Yes. At some point, your husband yelled, get him, he's 18. No. At some point, you, after having called Mr. Latham, you called Mr. Latham a punk, right? Yes. Yes, and what's, what's he gonna do, right? I'm sorry? You asked him, what are you gonna do, right? Um, yes. You told him, you're 18 now. Yes. He eventually slapped your phone out of your hands. <clears throat> Hit my face. He, he, he hit me. Out of your hands. <laughs> did, did he? Did, you, did your phone get slapped out of your hands? Did he hit me in the face? The I, I get to ask questions. The question is, did your phone get smacked out of your hands? Yes. And you, you say that the phone that it, it hit your face. I understand that. Um, his hand hit my face. Okay. Yeah. And at that point, your husband jumped out of his truck. My husband was already out of his truck. So he was already approaching before Zach even got the phone out of your hands. Because he had already hit me. As you we, said we before. Saw the, we saw the, the hit yesterday. Um, so your husband was already out of the truck. And at this point, Zach drove off, went up on the grass a little bit and drove off around your husband's truck and went home. Right? Yep. Okay. So let's talk about this swerve incident. Again, I'm going to remind you that you're under oath. So, as you're approaching Zach's truck, you're yelling at him about this incident, and you tell him, you have ring footage of this. You have, you have camera footage from your house, right? Correct. And he says he'd like to see it, because this didn't happen. He wanted to see it, right? Correct. You told him that you already showed it to the police. Correct. You hadn't showed it to the police? No. Now, yesterday, you testified that when you went to the police station and you were interviewed, you showed them that ring footage. I testified that I gave all of my phone to the police. And when Mr. Westin asked you about it, you said that you sat down in an interview room with police and you played the video for them and you screenshotted 
the portion that was shown to you yesterday, the still shot that was shown to you yesterday. Correct. And you said that the police were there and observed that. I gave that, no. I, they were in, I was at the police station is yeah. what I said. Okay, and you showed the officers that you had ring footage of that and you played it for them. That's what you said. I said I was at the police station when Gage and I went through it. I can pull the transcript from yesterday, but are you telling me now that you did not in fact show police that ring camera footage? I don't think I said that, I said we were at the police station when we found the ring footage. And so you and did not give the ring footage to police? They had, I gave them all the footage from my phone, yes. They had all the ring footage. I turned my phone over to them, yes. Did you tell them that there was ring, ring video footage camera yes. of Zach swerving towards Gage? Yes. I have a transcript here of your statements of police. Would you like to review this transcript and show me exactly where it is that you turned over to them that ring footage? I turned over my phone. Detective Rodriguez testified yesterday. <clears throat> when he was asked about your phone, he specifically stated that no one He's, he's the person who, who reviewed your phone. Right. He's the person who pulled that footage of you walking down the driveway. He testified yesterday he was never made aware of any ring video footage. So it's your testimony that Detective Rodriguez lied about that? No. And again, I have the transcript if you'd like to review your statement, but Nowhere in your statement did you tell the police that you had ring footage to show them, nor did you show them it. We have video of it. Are you, are you telling me today no. 